going and welcome back for another video. Today's video, we're going to be doing my top 10 comps for patch 11.2. This is the launch day patch of set 4.5. Uh, a little bit of background, I've been playing TFT for a long time. I'm a Grandmaster player and I've played PBE every single day of the PBE. So every single day of the past two weeks, at least four hours a day. And these are the comps that I found to have worked for me and what I've seen work for others. And I felt pretty good whenever I play them. Um, I'm These comps are in no particular order because it, it's just hard to tell what is exactly the best and what meta will develop after launch day. But these comps have all worked really well for me and I've seen work for other people. So let's just get right into it. So the first comp we're looking at is a soul carry. I have it labeled as a soul adepts, um, but don't focus too hard on the adepts. I just like adepts. I, I just, I love them. Um, you can play Vanguard Mystics instead of Adepts, and they're just as good or better depending on the lobby. And especially if you're just not hitting Adepts, don't focus too hard on that. Just just grab Frontliners, which are Vanguard Mystics or um, Adepts are very good. So this, this version that I have on the screen is a Mage Chosen. And these are the ideal items when you have a Mage set up and you can get these items. So um, basically, one thing that's uh, one thing about Asol is a lot of people are kind of misunderstand how to play him. If you're able to backline Asol, this is the ideal setup. You need mana generation, you need an AP item, and you need a defensive item. Is usually what you need. And so whether that defensive item be GA, whether that be Gunblade, whether that be QSS, you just need one. I prefer GA, um, and Gunblade is for kind of a different different version of the Asol build, which we'll talk a little bit about. But you need mana generation. So if you have a if you are able to get a Sojin and double Zeke's, then you are backlining Asol, and he is going to cast so fast. The thing about Asol is. If you try to play Asol Carry and you backline him without any mana generation, any way for him to get a cast off, a lot of times the fights will be decided before Asol can ult. And if you have an AP item, Asol only needs to cast four times, which means he actually just needs to ult. He just needs to cast twice and he'll do four ults because of mage buff. And so he only actually needs to get his mana charged up twice. And he usually will kill everybody on the board with this setup. Um, so with this setup also, we have Dragon Soul, um, I misplaced my I misplaced my Swain. You'd want your Swain on the same side, so hopefully the Dragon Soul buff will go to A Soul. But if it ends up going to Brand, it's not a big deal. He's got a lot of attack speed. It'll be okay. Uh, Dragon Soul is not the big focus in this build, and you don't even have to have Dragon Soul in this build, but it works really well. Um, again, let me talk about an alternative version of A Soul build. Let's say also you got Dragon Soul. You just modify your build and you'd add a Lulu in here and, instead, and you just want to have Swain and Siphoners in your build. Um, the Morgana is not super important in this build, but it's really good with Adepts because you get the Enlightened bonus. Enlightened's very strong. And you also get a uh, Siphoner bonus with this. And Morgana is just a really strong unit, which is why I have her in this build right here. But don't focus too hard on that. The key things that you need is you need mana generation for Asol, you need three mages, and you need a solid frontline. That's the key thing. If you can get Dragon Soul, that's a big bonus. If you can get Siphoner, that's a big bonus. Um, and all that good stuff. The other thing that's pretty nice for Asol is thinking about like like an Ari build, an Ari setup, is having that Yumi to get him to cast uh, that much faster as well is really nice to have in your build. So getting Yumi in your build is really nice. Okay, let's talk about the alternative version of Asol. I didn't actually make another version of it, but if you're not able to get all this mana generation, because this is pretty high rolled to have like perfect setup. If you're not able to get that and you're able to get, maybe you're able to get a GA, a Jeweled Gauntlet, and a Gunblade. A lot of times you can get a Gunblade. Then you actually will frontline your Asol. You'll put your Asol in the front line because you need to cast. And if you're not able to cast, it's doomed. <laughs> so you have to front line your Asol. And if you have a GA Gunblade, he'll be able to get those two casts off. The key thing is you got to get two casts off and you usually wipe someone's board, which will be four casts with Mage Buff. And Mage Buff is pretty important on Asol because how his ability works. Okay, I feel like I can talk about Asol all day. He is, he is actually my favorite carry, uh, but we'll just move on. Okay, now we're just going to talk about Slayer Olaf. So I have, I put on here Slayer Olaf and Vanguard Mystic Tree Slayer. So I have six Slayer on here. Um, a lot of people prefer three Slayer, Vanguard Mystics or Adepts, just whatever you can fit in the lobby. A lot of people don't think Slayer is worth it. I have six Slayer put on here. I found it to be okay. Um, I think Vanguard Mystics may be the better version, but also three Slayer got ner is getting nerfed on patch day. So you could do this version as well, but you can only do six Slayer version if you get Olaf chosen. All right, now let's talk about the items. So the key items on Olaf are going to be um, Deathblade and Runan's Hurricane. Uh, those are going to be the core components. Really think Warwick whenever you're building him. If you can't get Deathblade, you'll get Budget Deathblade, which is Giant Slayer or uh, IE 
or uh, Hodge is really good as well. So think Warwick. Think about whenever you couldn't get perfect Warwick items. That's what you're going to build on Olaf. I really prefer Frontline Olaf, just getting him to cast his ability and just start to tear through people as quick as possible. I really prefer Frontline Olaf. I don't personally like to have... Uh, personally like to have the RFC version. I think it takes a little bit too much time for him to ramp, but you can play the RFC version. It's pretty good as well, but I much prefer the frontline version. Third item doesn't matter. I've first placed plenty of games with like Stone Plate or War Mogster, just tanky item. Don't need QSS on him, obviously, because he has a built-in QSS to his kit. Um, on here, we have uh, getting three Dragon Soul is really, really, really nice for Olaf because he attacks so fast, he'll get a bunch of different procs with it. So I have, this is obviously like best case scenario. We have Swain and we have uh, Swain and we have Morgana in here. And so that's just is getting our uh, Dragon Soul and Siphoner with a Soul. Um, it's just gonna be best case scenario. And you don't want another frontline Dragon Soul because you don't want them stealing some of your uh, your Dragon Soul procs, right? So you wouldn't want a Siobhan in here. You'd rather have a Soul because it's much less likely a Soul is gonna get the Dragon Soul chosen. And you can put Olaf on the edge so he's more likely to get um, the Dragon Soul passive on him as well. This is the six Slayer version. Obviously, uh, you can run Zed instead of Darius. Darius doesn't matter, the, it really doesn't matter. But you can run, let's say you got Dragon Soul chosen, or maybe you just don't like this version, you wanna just run three Slayer and you end up just running, uh, end up running just Olaf and Samira, or you run Olaf Pike, Olaf Trinimir. Um, let's say that's the version you wanna run. Well, you just play like Vanguard Mystics with the build, so you would just play your standard, um, you could play your Siphoner still, but you could just play Yumi, Yumi, Zillion, Aatrox, Sejuani, the really, really great units. So you can just run that version as well. A lot of people prefer that version, but again, it's getting nerfed. So I think you can play both versions. You can only play the six Slayer version if you get Slayer chosen, because it is not worth putting in regular, like all of the Slayers in there. It is not worth doing that, but you can run it whenever you get the Slayer chosen like this. And that's gonna be pretty much the build. Alternatively, I don't have a Trinomir build on here, but you can run Trinomir when you don't hit Olaf. Trinomir is actually really decent. I just first placed a game today with Trinomir when I was trying to play Talon, and I just randomly played Trinomir. Trinomir can carry um, really, really hard, but most people prefer Olaf. I personally prefer Olaf, and I just play Trinomir if I can't hit Olaf is really what it is. Boom, bam, boom. Um, cool, we're gonna talk about Kale Adepts. A lot of people don't really like Kale, um, but we're gonna talk about Kale anyways. <laughs> I think she can be decent with a really good setup. A lot of people think she needs a really, really good setup to work. I personally think maybe maybe that's true, but maybe there's a little bit more leeway than people are giving credit for. But this is uh, Kale Adepts. You don't have to run Adepts, but Adepts is great. I love Adepts. You can play Vanguard Mystics. You can play six Elders and have Zaya as a secondary carry. There's a lot of different versions, but this is the easiest version to attain and the more standard version that you can play. And you can run random uh, Elder Wood right here until you hit Orn if you run on Zaya as a second carry, secondary carry. Key things on Kale. So I have QSS RFC Rageblade on here. Rageblade, okay, Rageblade and a utility item are probably the most important setup for her. I personally think she needs a QSS. And one of the big problems with Kale is her attack range is really, really low. And then, so if you build two defensive items with only one aggressive item, you end up lacking in damage sometimes. And so that can be a big issue with this build, which is a lot, of, which is a big reason why a lot of people don't like Kale, but you don't have to run RFC and you can just position a little bit differently or just like let Kale walk up. I think QSS is really important because I think most people are running Adepts or uh, Adepts or Vanguards in their builds and Kale really needs uptime. So if you're gonna slot out one of these items and it's probably as good to not run too defensive, you'd slot out RFC in my opinion but some people really prefer RFC instead, but I think you need QSS for uptime, considering Adepts and Vanguards are the best front lines right now, um, at least that I have seen. So you'll play this with Executioner chosen, or you can play this with Adept chosen. Alternatively, you can play the Vanguard version. You can play Vanguard chosen. Um, like if you get Aatrox chosen, you already are getting a two-star Kale, or you can also play, um, or you can also play Elderwood chosen and run Zaya as a secondary carry. Zaya can be a very good secondary carry. We're not gonna talk about Zaya build, because most more often than not, you wanna play Kale. Uh, but Zaya version is a lot different and you position a lot different in the game, but we're not gonna talk about that build. Um, typically when you run Executioners, you're playing Kale. Uh, but if you have to play Zaya, you play Zaya and you position a little bit differently on the map, but that's not what we're talking about here. Um, the other thing that we can talk about is, uh, is you don't have to play four Executioners. If you end up getting Executioner chosen, three Executioner is very important, but you end up getting 
uh, four executioners a lot of times can feel a little bit lacking. And um, so you don't have to run this Kindred if you don't want to. Let's say you get a two star Zillion at eight. Um, you can just play two star Zillion instead of like you high roll a Zillion. I would play Zillion over this Kindred. Also, you don't have to play Elderwoods. You could play uh, Spirit instead and Spirit would be very good. So you run the four executioners, you don't run Elder. But if you want Zai as a secondary carry, Elder is really huge, but you could just run Spirit instead so that you can get the massive ults onto, uh, or massive massive attack speed onto Kale, which is really, 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 really nice. Okay, let's move on to high roll, Timo Sharps. So as the video, as it says, it's high roll. Um, I, sharps are pretty hard to play. I think the only version of Sharps that work is if you just high roll a Timo Chosen, or maybe late game you end up you end up rolling down, you settle for a Sivir, and you hit a some you hit a Samira and you already have a two-star team. You're already running sharps early in the game. Then you can hold on to the game. But I think you just most most often lose out to assassin builds and you lose out to um, lose out to Slayer builds whenever you have to play uh, the version where you need Sivir to kind of carry. Um, this is the only version that I found to be really, 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 really successful. And but it's pretty high roll. Because this is you it requires you to early get an early Teemo chosen, or maybe you roll on seven to get just a mid-game build, and you end up hitting a Teemo and you natural a couple of them. Uh, and then you play for Teemo three. Uh, so the big thing in this build, so this is gonna be a Teemo three build. Big thing in this build is full mana on Teemo. So if you get Teemo chosen as a sharpshooter, you can play Teemo chosen as a spirit chosen. It's a little bit different, um, but it's not too different. So that's just a different version. Well, let's say you get four sharps and you're running uh, running this setup. Big thing with Teemo that makes him really OP that I think a lot of people don't understand is instant casting. So whatever mana you need to get on the Teemo from the instant cast, whenever he's chosen, he only needs three tiers. So that's why I have a boo buff and a Ludens. It doesn't matter what items they are, as long as he instant casts. The utility in his ultimate is insane. And that three star, that damage could just insta kill a backliner. Um, I have RFC on here, but it's it, RFC just is a really good defensive item for Teemo so that you can corner him and he can just sit here and charge up his mana. Um, alternatively, you could run QSS, you could run a death cap, especially with full mana uptime. You can run a death cap to hopefully one shot a backliner. I've ran that before, been very successful. I first placed a game with this build, what with death cap, and I insta killed backline. It's pretty, it's pretty nuts. Um, and if people try to run QSS, they try to get away with running without running QSS, then the, the Instacast Teemo will be insane. Especially if you're playing anywhere below Master MMR, a lot of people will just not run QSS and you can just punish them so hard with this build. Um, so we have Double Zeeks onto Sivir. I have Double Zeeks onto Sivir. This is like best case scenario. Um, the other best case scenario is if you're able to get like stack AD items on here and your, your other Sharpshooter will be Tristana or Nidalee or something like that until you can hit us hit a Samira and you can sell your Sivir and remake AD items onto Samira. Because the big thing that's wrong with Teemo, Teemo, Teemo build will get fourth, third place. But in order for you to win, you have to have somebody else take it home for you. Whether that be high roll two-star legendaries, or you get a two-star Samira with some really good items, she'll take it home for you. It's similar to if you ran Teemo build on set four. You had to have Jin win the game for you because Teemo can't do it by himself. But again, guys, that's why this is a high roll build. This isn't going to be something you can force or repeat every game, but this is when you get Teemo chosen. I first place almost every game I get Teemo chosen. Um, if, I, if I actually can hit my reroll, I can always do it. Okay, Nico Vanguard Mystics. So this is Nico Vanguard Fabled Mystics. You're going to play this whenever you get a Fabled Chosen, um, <clears throat> a Fabled Chosen, Vanguard Chosen, or Mystic Yumi Chosen. Um, so this that's the scenarios when you can play this. If you want to force this, you can force this because it's a level seven roll down. Not a lot of people roll on seven. So if you wanted to force this build, you could do that. But um, I really just play this if I get an, if I get an early um, Nautilus chosen or something like that, or I get an early Vanguard chosen and I find an early Nico and then I just kind of force into it from there is is a good way to do it. But most of the time when I most of the time I don't look for this build, but I'll settle on it if it's what I have to play. Um, or if I get a Vanguard, then I'll look for the build early. Okay, important things on this, it's just think Ari, you need her to cast. You need her to cast as quick as possible. So you kind of have like an Ari setup. You don't have to run Sojin, you could run GA, uh, similar to like how you play Ari, but Sojin is really nice as well. Um, 
yeah, so Sojourn is really nicely on there as well. If you can get Yumi to insta cast with double chalice and a Zeke's, she'll cast, she'll cast back, and then Yumi will, or Nico can get a really quick ult. So basically, the build is just like Ari. You have these really, this really, 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 really beefy front line that's going to buy time for you. I have Morgana in here, but you can put any unit here if you want to. This can be any unit. Um, but I just like Morgana. She's very, uh, I just like Morgana a lot. She's, she's just an insane unit. <laughs> so I just have Morgana there. You can put your Morello on your Cho'Gath, on your Sedge, or your Morgana, but I like it a lot on Cho'Gath, and it's pretty nice. You can item stack your, your frontliner as Cho'Gath, or you can item stack Sejuani, or if you get a three-star Nautilus, three-star Nautilus is pretty big in this build, you can do that. Other thing that's very important is having Aatrox in a spot where he can cast early. You want to uh, so even if, if that means you need to position some of your frontliners back, it's much more important that Aatrox cast than Sejuani cast. You want to put him in the vulnerable position so you can group people up so Nico can one-shot most of their team. Um, at nine, you can slot in any legendary. Yone, Set, Zill, Swain are best. Um, if you get Mystic Yumi chosen, you can put another Mystic here instead of Morgana. Play four Mystic, four Vanguards, three Fabled, all that, all that good stuff. Boom, bam, boom, Bob's your uncle. All right, Enlightened Build. Okay, um, so this is going to be Enlightened Build. So you'll play this whenever you get a Fiora or a Janna Chosen. Um, if you get a Janna Chosen, you will, I mean, not a Janna Chosen. If you get a Fiora Chosen, you will always sell uh, at level eight whenever you're doing your roll down, no matter what. Even if you three star, it's not worth it because she's going to be your item holder most of the time. Um, Fiora is going to be your item holder. You can run her if you get just like really high few Fiora items like Ludens and Ludens and stuff like that, and you're able to item hold someone else. There is a scenario, but 99% of the time, you will sell your Fiora. You don't have to sell your Janna because you can run her as a carry. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, so on Talon, the big thing on Talon is you want to have you want to have damage, defensive, and whatever after that. You can have another damage item. You can have a Last Whisper. You can have a Runan's Hurricane. You can have a Hodge. You can have a BT. Anything is fine there. It doesn't matter that much. Just key thing is damage. And defensive ga is the best defensive item on talon there's a lot of cc in the game and not having a ga on your talon or a qss in certain lobbies can be the difference between you giving someone a 15 health loss and taking the 15 health loss it really is that important to have a defensive item but for a talent to carry it also has to have a damage item i have last whisper here as his utility item because a lot of people are playing vanguard mystics right now and it can be very good um at the moment okay Notice I have Enlightened Chosen. You can play this like if you get Talon Chosen later. I just have this Enlightened Chosen, like saying the scenario that you get Janna Enlightened Chosen. You can run six Enlightened before you are able to get hit your legendaries like Swain and Yone. You can play that if you want to, but uh, it's not worth it, okay? Because like the difference between like the mana gen is really awesome and very cool, but uh, Yone ulting across the team and shredding them all the way down, um, getting Siphoner, you, you know, it's it's just just not worth it. The other thing is you have to have Assassin buff. If you don't have Assassin buff, Talon's damage is cut quite a bit, especially if you're doing the IE version of the build. So it's very important to get Assassin. Um, if you have Enlightened and you end up, let's say you end up getting an Enlightened Talon chosen, you can fit in you can fit in Zillion right here instead of Janna. That's also playable as well. At level nine, if you go to nine, you can slot in your Fiora to get that six Enlightened buff, but you're gonna take her out again once you get like a two-star Lee or two-star, um, you know, two-star Lee, two-star Set, something like that, two-star Zillion, two-star Azir. You're gonna, you're, gonna take, you're gonna take that Fiora out for that, but you can run six Enlightened temporarily on eight and temporarily on nine. And if you're just not hitting anything, I guess you can run six Enlightened and it's not too bad, but this version is definitely better. You don't have to have Swain in this build, but Siphoner does feel very nice. You can run uh, Nazus until you can hit your Swain. Uh, but essentially, you just want to run strongest units in here. But this is the strongest. This is basically the strongest version of the build. This is best case scenario. But it does have a lot of um, expensive units that, that you'll need to hit. You can run this build as Janna Carry. I've been known to be a Janna Addict myself uh, or a Janna Connoisseur. I love Janna. If you get a Janna chosen early and you run Blue Buff, Death cap on Janna, and you're able to three star on a level seven or level eight roll down. It is so crazy. Once you get your two star Talon and she's hitting them up with the AD bonus and that crazy high shield, once you have Death Cap on, it'll be like 800 health shield. It's 
it's nuts. It is unbelievably broken. Uh, so you can run a Jana carry version, but I just have this a more standard repeatable version you'll have. Uh, key other thing that I didn't talk about, Morello is Morgana's only important item. If you don't have mana generation on Morgana, um, sometimes it's better to frontline Morgana. So slaughter up here, move your Yoni over a space so that she'll go off as quick as possible because getting that Dazzle across the team and getting that Morello across the team is very important. Alternatively, you can run carry items like uh, IE Jeweled Gauntlet, something like that, You and, and like blue buff is fine too, but Morello is just gonna be your best bet. It's the only item that's very important on her. Okay, we're gonna talk about Bonky Kong real quick. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. This is a high roll build. Uh, it's very hard to first place with Bonky Kong. Uh, the fourth place build version of Bonky Kong is six divine. Like most of the time you play Bonky Kong, you're gonna get fourth place if you're able to hit Bonky Kong. Uh, you can play six divine, but you never end up getting backline carries. That's gonna be a fourth place or a third place. Uh, you can also play four Vanguard, uh, four Vanguard, three Fabled, two Mystic. You can play Fabled version, but it's really hard to get carry items onto your Nico a lot of times because that means you're gonna be rolling on seven. Um, most likely because in, in that scenario, you're just not hitting. But if you high roll and you're able to roll an eight, you can run that version and you can start to get items in the later stages of the game. That's usually a third place build as well. This is the only build I found to first place. And that's whenever you're able to get, or first or second, is you're able to get Kale as a six divine backline carry. And you'll kind of just play a glass cannon because hopefully your Wukong is gonna be able to clean up some work. And so you don't have to run Kale with those very hyper specific items. You'll just run glass cannon items on your Kale. Hopefully you can get a Zeke's or something like that. All she needs is two executioners. And this is kind of like what you'll have at level nine and stuff like that. Um, but this is like best case scenario. This is the only way you can first place with the build. That's why I said it's a high roll build. Wukong items don't really matter that much. Just you need damage. Uh, you need damage and you need um, some type of some type of sustain or utility. So these are just those, uh, but your items don't matter that much. You just need damage. And you can play RFC as your utility. You can play QSS as your utility. I put BT as utility, um, but I don't know. Bonky Kong just late game falls off. Uh, so that's why you have to get something like Kale to carry your backline. Um, also, I've seen like a six Vanguard version of this, but I don't know. I think that might be a new build. Okay, six six duelist. Yeah, Scalista carry. Okay, I put a long description on this. I'm not going to talk through it too much. This is a high roll build. This build is not very good. This is best case scenario. I had the most turbo high roll version of this build today. I had three star Yasuo, three star Kalista, three star Jax, and I second place uh, to a Warlord build. Not even a good, not even that good of a Warlord build. I, I second place. Um, this is best case scenario. If you just end up playing Yasuo carry and you're able to hit it, it's probably gonna be a fourth place. If you're able to get perfect Kalista items and you end up three starring her later in the game, that can be a top two. But this is best case scenario. There's another version of this build where you run four enlightened and you run Morgana as a backline carry. You drop Callista and you just run uh, you run Fiora, uh, Fiora in here, and you run four enlightened Yasuo three star three adepts. That's another version of the build, but it's pretty hard to do it. You can run um, I've ran a four duelist Trinomir carry build, but that's more of a Slayer type build, and that's more of like you're trying to play off, but you hit this and you end up slotting some duelist in. I got a Duelist Chosen. I ran Adepts, Duelist Chosen, and three Slayer. I got four. It was crazy. I first placed the game, but this is going to be your more standard Duelist game. And uh, the standard Duelist build is not so good. It's really high roll. And even when I high roll, best place I've ever gotten is second place. And I played a lot of Duelist games, actually, on PBE. Okay, this is Diana Reroll. Uh, so Diana Reroll, a lot of people think is like one of the best builds. I haven't personally had a had a lot of opportunities to play this build because it's always contested every game I try to play it. Uh, but this is the version I've seen when other people actually hit the build that has been successful and what they end up doing with it. There's a bunch of different versions of the build. Um, damn, my phone's ringing, didn't it? Oh well, uh, sorry, that was <laughs> probably annoying. Okay, this is the Diana reroll right here. Uh, <laughs> so this is gonna be um, the important items on Diana that a lot of people have been running is IE. IE does really well, specifically in the six Sin version, it does super well. And then Titans is a really good item. And people have been running Runans just for the combo with the IE, but you can run any other item there. You don't have to run Titans. The important item is IE. And you can run like GA, you can run <clears throat> you can run Bramble, Declaw if you really want to. You can run Gunblade, Hodge. That's fine too. Um, but this is the version that most people have been looking for. Um, it's really nice to have aura items on your Yumi um, for for your spirit. You can run Talon as a secondary carry. 
Um, I don't think Akali is a very good secondary carry um, in this build, but Talon, Talon is pretty decent secondary carry later in the game. So this version I put on here is going to be the third version, four Sin, two Spirit, two Mystic, two Vanguards, and then you can have one random strong unit. This is assuming you get like, this is assuming that you get an Assassin chosen and you would drop Akali because you would have, uh, you would just be running four Sins. Um, so that's that version of the build. If you end up getting, but a lot of people aren't running that. Most people are running Sin Chosen, running Six Sin. The reason why I included this one in the picture is because Six Sin is getting nerfed on uh, the day one patch, but it's not getting nerfed very much. But the most standard version people are running is Six Sin. And so you run, uh, so you'd have to have uh, Sin Chosen. So you'd have to have Diana Sin Chosen. You run two Mystic, two Spirit, and then one random frontliner, like a Yone, like a Sejuani, like an Aatrox. Uh, something like that and then you'd make sure that you'd run yumi and you can run any other mystic over here uh jana is really good especially if you're running talon carry alternatively you can run adepts as your front line if you're going to do uh four sin two spirit two mystic two vanguard you don't run jana you run shin instead and you wouldn't run a kali as your thing because you would drop you would uh, need to drop ninja you'd run katarina instead and you could play uh yone shin <clears throat> Yone Shin Aurelia and that Aurelia will get the enlightened for your talent which is most likely going to be your secondary carry of the build but there's a bunch of different versions you can also run a four spirit version that specifically you get spirit chosen and Teemo is going to be the fourth spirit or the third spirit unit but when you have chosen it'll be your other spirit unit a lot of people love this build it's super flexible um and yeah there it is some people think it's the best build in the game right now it's very contested all right the Akali classic so the Akali classic is going to be uh, for, this is going to be a call we chose. I'm going to be four sin. <clears throat> four sin, uh, two keeper, two mystic, two spirit, um, four ninja, of course. So um, I tried to run a call you without four ninja. It was very difficult. A lot of times you just play this build if you're trying to run Zed, but you hit a call. And so you try to build Zed items first, like RFC. IE is probably our best item. Um, and then blue buff is really nice. Gunblade's good. Uh, GA. Um, Gunblade's fine, uh, but this is probably gonna be your best uh, best setup. Uh, so this is with Assassin Chosen. You can run this build without Assassin Chosen and just run two Sin. Um, this is this is if you hit Azir and you run Keeper. You can also play Adepts in this build if you if you can't hit Azir and maybe you don't want to run four Sins. You can run Adepts at eight. I think Spirit is pretty nice in this build uh, with this setup, but you don't have to have that either. This build's pretty flexible. Key thing is you need four. Key thing is you need four ninjas and you need really good items on a Kali. I usually don't play this on purpose. I play it if it's what I hit, um, or if I had to do a level seven roll down like I'm losing, then I'll play this build on purpose because I need to hit a strong mid game, strong mid to early late game build because I'm playing for fourth, baby. I usually play this build when I'm playing for fourth. Uh, you don't have to play keepers. You can play adepts instead if you can't hit a zero, but I like keepers um, and you can run random Yone in this build at eight or nine. All right, the Zed Classico. So it's basically the same thing. You're just gonna be running three Slayers. <clears throat> you're just gonna be running three Slayers and you're gonna be running a Samira. You can run Pike instead of Samira as your as your, as your your other Slayer. Um, to, in order the first place this build, a lot of times you have to have a secondary carry, which is most likely gonna be Samira. You know, uh, on old Zed build, your secondary carry might be Evelyn, something like that. Uh, but the secondary carry on this is gonna be Samira. You can slam items onto a Pike or a Olaf if you want, if you end up running an Olaf until you can get your two source Samira in the late game. There are a bunch of different versions of this build. Some people run this without having four ninja. They run Vanguard Mystics or they run Adepts. Or uh, well, you can't run Adepts, Vanguard Mystics. Instead of this, a lot of people prefer that version, but they're nerfing three Slayer. And so maybe you need a little bit of extra AD uh, from the ninja. So I think the ninja version might actually be the preferred version now, whereas people were playing three slayer, but three slayer got nerfed a little bit. Uh, so maybe Zed needs that a little bit of a D bump now. Anyways, guys, I just talked for about 30 minutes. That's actually 11 builds. That was a long time. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, you can check out my stream. I stream every single day. I'll be trying to do my challenger climb this year. I only hit GM, uh, this year. So we're going to try to do our challenger climb this time. Uh, maybe we can speed run that shit. We've been practicing. We've been practicing, okay? So yeah, make sure you give me a follow at Trajan, uh, twitch.tv slash TFT if you like the video and all that good stuff. That's where most of my content is. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye. Hey, do. Bye-bye.